Hi, this is Scott Brown with another P10 tool review covering the Texa Axoni Nemo Plus with Multi-Hub. Now this is video number two in this three-part series. Now in the first video, we covered quite a bit of ground, but in this video, we're gonna cover and highlight a few areas that I find quite unique and valuable. <laughs> Now, when it comes to streamlining your workflow, your subscription also includes free motor true speed repair and service data access. So what this means is that we can go right from the vehicle within the scan tool over to service information and not miss a beat. So let's take a look at how this works. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out. We're gonna go to motor, technical data. We'll look to see if we can find something related to so G37 Sport. So let's just look up power steering. Okay. All right. Get rid of our keyboard. We got a power steering control module. Let's see what this is here. Now, if you haven't watched the first video yet in this series, I encourage you to check it out because we cover a broad range of the great features this beast of a tool provides. So we're gonna run a full scan on this vehicle. All right, we've got a few modules that have codes in them, but we're gonna select this uh, gauges panel here, which will give us a topology view on the vehicle. So you can see that we've got uh, modules with codes. So the RAD, it's got a bunch of them there. And if we don't know what RAD is, it says radio here, but we do have a legend up here in the top. And this shows you what all the acronyms are for each of the modules so that's really a nice feature to uh, to have um, you can highlight each of the systems so there's your powertrain related modules that are highlighted there vin related modules that have the vin body ac infotainment electrical system and driver assistance. Pretty much everything lights up because driver assistance has everything. So in this radio, um, we can hit diagnosis and it's gonna take us into that module and let us carry on and investigate. And anytime we're running either a full on full scan or generating any useful data, whether it be screenshots or a full PDF report, we can go ahead and hop right over to a web browser and we'll pull up our shop management system, go right into the customer's ticket and add those vehicle assets right into the notes area. All right. We'll go to the ticket. I'm going to go ahead and put, put that in here. going to edit. Let's click attachments to upload. Go up, up, Honda. I think it's this one right here. There's our APP road test. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, open. That's going to upload it to the ticket. All right. And I can put my notes in there later here, publish finding. There's my APP road test right in the ticket there. Cool. Now, one of the other areas that I really found cool and I wanna highlight again is the fact that this has this VIN and mileage check function. And what's very, really valuable here is that you can quickly run this procedure and it will go out and hit all the modules 
that store VIN and mileage and pull back a report and so you can see it all on one page. Okay, we're gonna perform that VIN and mileage check here. Uh, this is passenger car. We're gonna use the VIN scan 2.0 going to identify the vehicle but uh, this routine we're going to run uh, it's going to go basically and pull all the modules on the vehicle that have the VIN and the mileage stored and it's going to produce a nice little report for us and this is a good time to or it might be wise to do this if uh, for some reason you know you're working on a vehicle that has some peculiar problems and you're not sure if maybe others have been working on it uh, and where there might be a maintenance induced uh, failure on the vehicle. Um, as a lot of these modules, um, we need to make sure that they're all at the right software levels, but more importantly, they should have the right mileage and VIN number in them. They should all match. So this tool here will let you do this and this is what we're doing right now. So we can see we've got VIN numbers stored in all these modules. And I see that the VIN, VINs all match. Not all the modules store the odometer. So I see the body controller is storing the odometer. And the serial data gateway module is also uh, storing the, or no, I'm sorry, it's the instrument cluster. Yeah, instrument cluster and the body controller body computer so we can we can hit print and we've got to enter a plate number in here and the odometer okay so it's 31938 so we're going to check that off carried out the creation of that PDF. We can now open it up and have a look. And there's our, there's our quick report. Pretty cool. Now in the third and final video, we're going to go ahead and perform an OEM J2534 reprogramming operation. And because the tablet here is Windows based and it's compliant with OEM software, we can go ahead and load that software right into the tool and then use the Texa TXT Multi-Hub, which is J2534 compliant, and we'll be able to connect to the vehicle, load up the manufacturer software on the tablet, and carry out those operations. A really unique feature. Other tools that are not Windows-based make this service impossible. Now, the TXT Multi-Hub VCI is quite versatile, and it allows one to configure it to record certain parameters while on a road test without the need of the tablet going along for the ride. Now, I've used this several times where I've had an office assistant take the vehicle out for a long road test while the VCI was recording, and this was a really cool feature that I found to be pretty slick in my book. So let's check it out. So one of the cool things you can do uh, with the Texa here is uh, we're going to go to parameters and we're going to set up a filter here and um, i mainly want to look at uh, so rpm uh, we don't want maximum we want basically i would just type in speed uh, engine speed okay let's uh, clear that out let's look at uh, app pedal accelerator pedal position one and two okay those are the voltages okay and then we can do throttle and we'll do uh, absolute throttle position okay um, and we can also do the voltages here too okay so we got calculated load value okay go ahead and select that okay now i'm going to hit the check mark 
So here's the other thing that you can do is you can go on click this road test icon right here and it says the device which is our our interface will be configured in the dynamic test mode okay the parameters selected um, will be in the current group of favorites okay so we're going to click check it says enter the license plate number so we can associate it afterwards so i'm going to click in here and we're going to select that and it says transferring the configuration, okay? And this screen here says, uh, press confirm to close the self-diagnosis automatically, disconnect any USB cables. We're wireless to the interface, so we don't need to worry about that. And it says, remember that the device is ready for the dynamic test on the vehicle uh, or boat that has been configured and it will remain in the state until the following diagnostic session. So the recording will be started each time the following conditions are present simultaneously. The VCI is connected to the diagnostic socket and the key is in the run position or the vehicle boat is ready to be started with or without electronic key. You may recover and save the recordings made by running a new diagnosis on the vehicle. And then you may view the saved recordings through the customer management function and then for further details regarding the dynamic test function, see the help section. Okay, so I'm gonna just click okay here. All right, okay. And then we're gonna turn the scan tool off. And it says record on, okay. So I'm gonna turn the key off momentarily. And then I'm gonna press on the brake start the vehicle up and now it is recording okay and then what i can do is send an assistant out to uh, road test the vehicle extensively and then have them bring it back and then i can pull the data up through the through the scan tool okay so i just had uh, one of the office assistants drive the vehicle for a, an extended period of time Brought the vehicle back and then I've just now reconnected to the vehicle with the tablet and you can see that this just popped up. It says the VCI being used, there's a trip recording made through the dynamic test function. Press save to import. All right, so I'm gonna hit save and it's gonna bring in that long recording. All right, do you wanna view it now? Sure, let's view it. So now we're gonna get a uh, throttle opening and she said it ran just fine. So uh, throttle adapted. All right. And there's our recording, okay. Now another cool feature that I really like is their ability to visualize data through their live data dashboard. Now this is a unique feature to the Texa IDC5, and I see it being quite useful as it displays the data contextually. We'll take a look at a vehicle I had in recently with an intermittent stalling complaint and how we use the tool to hone in on the throttle body, carry out a cleaning service, a reset of the adaptives, and a follow-up repair verification. So let's take a look. All right, one of the cool things about this tool here is that it's got a Pretty interesting um, display panel. You might find it appealing, maybe not, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm gonna go to gasoline injection on this. I'm gonna hit start here on the top one. And I'm really interested in looking at throttle opening, um, looking for some sort of compensation or what have you. So I've already scanned the vehicle. There are no codes in it. Uh, but if I come over here to parameters, you'll see that down here at the bottom, um, you have this gauges uh, cluster right there. So that's going to pull up one of their their unique um, display pages. It kind of lays out the vehicle here. We've got fuel rail pressure, injection time, fuel tank pressure, desired fuel rail pressure. Um, cooling temperature, throttle opening. So I'm gonna cycle the throttle. So we go to 100%. 
And then we can see that the voltage here, this is really what I'm interested in. Um, you'll see air mass, this is a speed density setup, so there's nothing there. So we'll start the vehicle up, let it idle. And I've already road tested it. This vehicle's here for an intermittent stalling uh, complaint at idle. We've not been able to duplicate the complaint at all. So what I'm suspecting, uh, the car has basically uh, got 32,000 miles on it. I've never seen the vehicle before. Don't know what kind of maintenance it, it's had. Uh, oil level was full when it got, came in here. So uh, don't know when it was topped off or what have you, but it's not, not fresh oil. But I'm suspecting that maybe the throttle body may be dirty, okay? So I wanna collect some data before I do anything to this vehicle, okay? So I can see that we're at 0.69. I've got no loads on. It is warm, you know, 173 degrees. I'm gonna go to drive. So we see our throttle uh, pedal, or our uh, throttle plate, 0 0.709. Back to park. 0.66. Okay, let's turn on the air. 0.718, 725. And I'm going to go ahead and put it into drive. Okay. All right. Well, now that I've gathered those uh, bits of uh, data there, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut it off, do an inspection, uh, visual inspection of the throttle plate. If it's dirty, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. All right, so now we're gonna go back into the engine. We're gonna reset the adaptations uh, on, the, on the engine. Confirm. Okay, we're done. Press confirm. Here, let's just look at our, go back to our screen. You can see the throttle position for sensor one is now 0.57. So we were able to drop that down a bit. So we're going into drive. Now we're at 0.6. Well, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful and informative, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and thanks for watching.